Welcome back to the next in our series on creating a database-backed web application. In the previous video, we created this database with some jokes in it. It has three columns. It has a joke ID, a joke question, and a joke answer. Now it's time to connect our web page to this database on the back end. So let's go look in our folder where we have our USB web server. And I'm going to look in the folder called root. So inside the root folder is where the web page index file is found. Last time we did some editing on this and we created a very simple version of our page. So we have HTML to start and end the page. We have a header and then we have the body and then inside here we just have something like this one that says jokes page. Now how do we actually make this web page talk to the database? And so now we're going to introduce a new language that we haven't seen before. It's called PHP. Now I'm going to assume that you already know some programming. So you should have seen something in JavaScript or C Sharp or Java or Visual Basic or any programming language at all because PHP follows the standards of programming language. In a static web page you see things like tags h1 and div and things like that but when we do programming on the server for PHP we start with a field called a question mark with a bracket and then we end it with another question mark and a close bracket inside of those two tags are going to be server executed code so this is just like in JavaScript on a web page except this code has to run on the server and so the the web browser never actually sees this code this is a directive to the web server now to say stop showing this to the browser instead execute the code and generate some HTML so you'll see what I mean in a minute the first thing that we have to do is we have to make a connection to our database to make it work. So let's go to the internet and we're going to search for a command in Google. We're going to say PHP, that's our first keyword, and we're going to say connect to MySQL. How do you do that? So the first code page that comes up are two websites that are very common. There's W3Schools, which is good, and then there's the PHP.net. This is the official website for the language on PHP. So let's look at that one. So now we're looking at a official documentation on PHP. This opens a connection to a MySQL server. And there's a warning that says this extension was deprecated. That means it's no longer recommended. It's been removed. Instead use this, MySQL I. So let's click here and we'll go straight to the version of the current PHP implement. We know we're looking for connections, so I'm going to click here and bring us to the connections part of the manual. Here's the code. We're going to take this section right here and we're going to copy it into our program. We're going to just steal that code and take it into our PHP section and paste it with some modifications. Now let's see what this code does. This is an object-oriented language. So this is an instance of the object called MySQL I. And uh, let's just look at what's inside these parentheses. This looks like connection information. Localhost, that's the name of our server. User, that's the username to get in. There's a password and a database name. In our case, we're going to create four variables. We're going to have this thing called, um, we're going to say host equals, we're going to say localhost. That's, that's the name of our server. And then we're going to have the username. And in our case, it was the word root. Now I'm going to get this information directly off of this. Now I'm getting this information directly off of the initial login page to our database. So you have to do some recall on that. Go back and look at the first video on databases to see where this came from. What is the user password on that thing? It is going to be, uh, what was it? USBW. That was the password to get in. And then the database in use is going to be, I think it was the word test is the name of our database. And so we're going to put four variables together. This is a common thing in PHP. You create these four and then make a connection here. So instead of these variables here, I'm going to use the word dollar sign host. Instead of user, I'm going to put in the word username. Instead of the quotes with password, you can guess I'm going to put in dollar sign user underscore pass. 
and instead of the database in here in quotes I'm gonna put in the word database in use and so now we have the connection information that is specific to our web server now down here we have some other statements that says if the object returns an error then we're going to say fail to connect and then also if it doesn't have an error it will echo out something else so what's this echo command in PHP this is like the uh, print command so you can echo something to your web browser now the following code is basically the exact same thing instead of using the word localhost it uses the IP address for our computer so we're just gonna leave it as localhost so I'll delete this stuff here and the last line we can delete as well so this is a test we're going to see if our web page can connect to our web database server so let's save this let's go back to our web server command and let's choose localhost and see what comes up and so you can see that on our web page we have the title jokes page and then something called localhost via TCP IP let's look at our code again and so there is the information this line here comes back from our web server now let's make an error instead of uh, instead of using the database name test let's spell it let's call it test U or something like that save it refresh this page immediately we get an error the error it's got lots of confusing things but here's the key part right here unknown database your error is found on line 19 let's take a look at our code here and sure enough line 19 is the connection of where we're trying to connect to the database and so the error is that it doesn't know what test U is so sure enough let's change this back to our database just called test we could also use the different password let's see if we put an error in like uh, instead of USBW let's put in USBW 9 let's try that now we have a different error it says access is denied for this user and so we're not getting the right password so we can see that there are errors coming out if we don't do it correctly let's change everything to the correct names save it and refresh and now we have no errors and all we have is this message that says a connection well once we have a connection we can use that connection to pull data out of the database now I sort of forget how to get the data out of a database so I'm gonna go and rely on Google again I'm gonna choose a MySQL command and I'm gonna say get data uh, from a table how do I do that let's go look it up so it looks like there's some good tutorials let's try the one from W3 schools so here's an example of how this is supposed to work so I like what I see here I'm gonna borrow this code here so I'm gonna select everything from the SQL select statement all the way down to this connection close so I'm gonna copy that and put it into my notepad so I'm gonna change some numbers in here and some values we're creating a variable called SQL this is a statement that is basically a SQL statement and so select ID first name last name from my guest this looks like a, a different type of database than we've designed so I'm going to delete these field names and change them to mine remember I had joke ID comma joke underscore question and the other was called joke answer and the table was called the jokes table and so I'm going to select the three different fields from the fa table called jokes jokes table now I get something called a result and the uh, connection here is not called CONN I'm using something different it's called my SQL I so let's go and change that to match the name I defined earlier so this here this statement will actually execute the query inside of these quotes what happens then now we're gonna do a question here if if the result has number of rows greater than zero or in other words we got something back then we want to output the data for each row so we're gonna get a while loop going so we're gonna have a row value equals the result called the fetch association array an association array looks something like this down here the row is an array with three values we're gonna have a row and instead of ID I'm gonna say it's the first 
label in our table, so it's joke ID. Then we're going to have the next item in our columns is going to be the joke question. And so the row with the column name here is going to be joke question. And then here instead of last name we're going to say joke answer. And then we tack on a break, a BR. Also notice these periods. In PHP, if you want to concatenate text together, in other words, glue it together, stick it together, you, you use a, a period. In JavaScript, you use plus signs. Other languages might have like an ampersand, but in PHP, you put in a period, and then you can put another string, and then follow it by a period and another variable. So this should have a whole string of letters. So the while loop ends. And if we don't get any results, it says zero results. The last thing is the connection name is not in our example called con, it's called MySQL. OK, so I've got everything typed here. Let's see if it works. I'm going to save it. And then let's go back to our web page and refresh the main page. So we've got our connection message. And then it starts spitting out these values here. It shows our joke ID, then it shows the question, and then it finally gives us the answer. I've got an error here. Let's see what's going on in line number 38. 38, it's trying to close my database. I forgot to put in SQLI. So let's save that. And let's do a refresh on the page. And now the database has no errors. So this code here, I copied from the internet and modified it. Let's double check to make sure we understand what's going on. So let's put in some comments. First of all, this is four variables to connect to the database. And this is create a database object or instance. If there are any values in the table, I'm also going to add one more thing. This new line command doesn't seem to do anything, so I'm going to replace it with a BR for a line break. Let's refresh this. And so now we have a much more well-defined table. 